All right. So we're going to have a look through today. Going to have a look at. Um, so structuring your revision, firstly, just to kind of give you a, a bit of a process of the things that you should be, uh, steps you should be taking. Um, uh, the, the, the generally, all of you will have a preference over which one's the most important um, or the most useful for you. But just to make sure you kind of got a bit of variety in your revision, variety is really key uh, for getting memory um, memory engaged in the information you're trying to take in. Uh, going to have a look at the day before your exams, the things you want to be considering in advance of that actual exam um, and logistically, as well as sort of, uh, in terms of preparing you, motivating you. Um, and just going to just show you into revision, mate. Make sure that you've um, seen the practice style where you can uh, just see what the exam is going to look like. Those of you that have done an exam through PSI, which is the new um, online provider where you're doing exams remotely, you'll have seen that. So I'll do that at the end um, in case you want to jump off. But if you haven't done one online before, then I'm going to just give you an idea of what to expect. It's really worth checking it out beforehand just so you go in confident that you know what you're doing. It's not new to you. OK, so the first thing I'm going to um, encourage you to do, and, and most of you have done this, is, is book your exam. And the most important thing about preparing for multiple choice is having a deadline. If you don't have a deadline, it's going to drag on. So you want to have a day that you're working towards, something that you can build up on. Um, I'd always recommend giving yourself um, ideally around six weeks uh, from getting the book to, to doing the exam or um, or if you're doing coursework, you might want a little bit longer than that to, of course, do the coursework first. But really, you want a quite a condensed amount of time that you're going to be in a momentum of working through the book, learning the material, and then working to the point that you are memorising the material as well. So if you haven't got your exam booked, absolutely do that. Um, if you um, are on our courses as well, we've got a new feature I'm just going to share with you about this, um, which is... For us to help you um, with your booking your exam. So our online course, when you go in to the online course, there's a save the date section in here now. Um, picture of us in the summer, a little while, little while ago. Uh, you can put in your details here and let us know the date of your exam. When you send that to us, we'll also give you guidance. So a week before, we'll give you some pointers that will help you. A week before, we'll give you some pointers that will help you the day before, and then we'll get in touch with you the day after. Uh, see how you did and um, give you some guidance depending on how you did on what your next steps might be as well so um, feel free to complete that if you are in the course if you're not in the course we are actually putting that on our website as well so other people can um, can access that too uh, it's just going to go live in probably in about a month that we'll have that on there for everybody all right so steps to go through and um, so when we go through revision you're starting off <laughs> with the textbooks that we all love, these, these lovely textbooks that we need to turn into normal language and we need to make memorable to us. So of course the starting place is always gonna be the textbook. I would recommend that you at least read the textbook once, even if you're doing our online courses, even though we break down the textbook for you, still read that textbook once. Um, and as you're going through it, it's key just to focus on how you're breaking it down. So the beginning sections of each chapter, they are there to introduce you to the chapter. So you wanna read those first, even though they might feel a little bit basic because they're setting you up for the detail that will come later on. Otherwise you might find you get halfway through the chapter and you got a little bit lost. So you wanna start back there. Um, absolutely use your highlighter as you go through just to make that book come to life a little bit more and just to separate as you're reading, otherwise you might do the thing, I certainly do, where you suddenly realise that your mind's been somewhere else as you've been going through that book as well. So um, definitely work through the textbook and make some notes as you do that. What we want to do is take the book and condense it as quickly as we can with materials. So whether these are materials that you're making or materials you're getting elsewhere, then these are going to be what you want to then focus on. So we're going from this to this. So we're learning the information when we're at this stage. And then we are memorizing the information when it is smaller and more compact, because that's where the questions are going to be. But we need to have the understanding to get to the questions. So we'd recommend at this stage that you start looking at revision cards. So revision cards are absolutely going to help you in terms of key terms, key things to remember. And with multiple choice exams, there is a limitation on what they can ask you. It has to be something that can be simplified into a short question, a short answer. So revision cards are really useful. There's going to be generally quite a lot of overlap. Um, of course, we have revision cards for lots of different materials. You can make your own as well. So look at the keywords at the beginning of each chapter that are highlighted. Those are really good places to start in terms of making revision cards. 
The process of writing them out actually might help your memory as well. So even those of you that have got an exam on Monday, you're thinking that sounds like a lot of work to do between now and then, that process might be really valuable for you. Um, questions. So we want to be doing questions quite early on in Eurovision because this is going to point out to you where you are um, making sense, where the book is working for you and where you have some gaps in your knowledge as well. So this is a nice way of just checking how you are doing and checking your progress. And um, I'm going to give you some pointers on to where to find questions as well. So you've got some options for that. Of course, you've got some in Revision Mate that you've probably found, but I'll find, show you some that are maybe a little bit harder to find as well. Um, checklists. So as you go to the end of each chapter and it gives you a rundown of all the key points that were in that chapter, that's where you want to just check off that you've got those covered. Um, and then we want to do more questions as we're building up. So this last little stage here, this is the last couple of days before your exam, where those of you um, who've got your exam next week will probably be. Questions, questions, questions. What I really recommend doing is getting a question paper, going for it, marking yourself, seeing what you get. Maybe you get 80%, which would be brilliant. Amazing if you start with 80%. Still do it again. See if you can up that 85%, do it again, up, do it again, do it again. And really focus on the repetition until you get 100% in those questions. Because you will find similarity between the questions in that paper and the ones you get on the day. They won't be the same, but there will be absolutely be themes. So if you have mastered all of those questions in that paper that you've got the answers to, then that's really gonna set you up with a good percentage of questions that you're going to feel quite comfortable about hopefully in that exam as well so don't just do them to see that you're passing get to the point that you're working on them so you feel comfortable with all of the content in there as well um, revision cards you want to start checking them off and just making sure you can remember everyone so what i um, recommend as a technique is you start with your pack the ones that you absolutely remember put to one side get that pile sh shorter and shorter you might just be working off five to ten cards come the end of it that you just really want to make sure that you remember which take us to the last session, which is luggage stuffing. This is Grace's term. Um, this is essentially when your suitcase is full up and what else can you shove in there? So this is when you've done all your revision, but you've probably got a handful of things you're struggling to remember. So there'll always be certain bits that are really hard um, to, for you personally to pick up on and certain bits that are difficult for everyone to pick up on. Those ones, have them ready for you just before you go into the exam. I used to write these down um, when I was sat in a waiting room because I used to do this the old fashioned way in, in the in the rooms. Um, these would be the last thing I would read and I would read it over and over and over again as I was queuing up to go in. And as soon as we had to put our bags down, then it would go away. But it would be the last thing I paid attention to. So as soon as I came in, it was right there. And then if you have got your blank paper okay, and they've seen it and you've showed them that you have blank paper, as soon as the exam starts, you can write notes down on that paper as well. So anything that you wanna make sure you have for your short-term memory that can be jotted down on there as well, as long as you've done that once the exam has started. All right, any questions on any of those um, steps, pop them into the chat and I'll build on what we're gonna go through here. Uh, so in terms of focusing on your revision, so of course deadlines help. Uh, and those of you that got exams next week will probably find you're in this stage where you have to cram. Okay? You're going to have to put some hours in. So you're probably going to put some chunks of your time aside for this weekend, which is fantastic. What we want to do is make sure that we're just separating some time as we go through that. We're not just trying to focus nonstop for two or three hours at a desk. So the Pomodoro technique is the one that is best proven here for keeping us engaged and keeping our minds focused. So we want to pick our tasks. So let's say that we are going to uh, work on a practice paper. We want to do 25 minutes. We want to have a break. Five minute break, back on the task, back on the task. We're going to do this five times and then we're going to give ourselves a real break. So a 15 minute, half an hour opportunity to step away from what you're doing and try and think about something else. Maybe go and make a cup of tea, sit down and have uh, a little bit of, of distance from the space that you've been revising as well but try and avoid opening anything up that will get you completely distracted like TikTok if you are anything like me. Okay. So the day before the exam, um, so the morning of the day before your exam, do a final pass paper. And this can be one that you've already done. Okay, so just make sure you're doing it again to pick out any areas where you have got any gaps there as well. It's worth doing an index test. 
So you'll find your index at the back of the book. Again, this is a list of things to just check off and make sure you're comfortable with all of them in there. Anything that you're not sure about, go back and have a look at those. Sometimes there's really small sections in the book that might feel they're not so likely to produce question because they're quite short. But actually, if they're in that index test, that tells you they are a key part of the page. So any problem areas that you've got left, absolutely go in and tackle them. Um, if you're on an online course, of course, you can just go into the relevant section and just rewatch the video content around that section as well. Otherwise, go into the full textbook, start in terms of the text that the CII have got there, and then try and explain it in your own words. Once you can talk about something in normal language, not textbook language, it's really going to help you feel comfortable you've understood it, ready for the exam. So the afternoon, find your ID. Nothing worse than looking for your ID on the day of your exam if it's not where you think it's going to be. Um, so just get that ID and any paperwork that you need in advance. Um, make sure you've, you've checked your instructions and you've got all of that available for you. Check on the CII website just to see if there are any um, updates that you should be aware of. I'll show you where to find these. Um, sometimes you just get a couple of bits coming through that the CII share on the website around your module. Um, and then have a look through your own notes or your revision cards uh, one last time, making sure, well, one, one last time slowly, making sure you are ready. And then the evening of your exam. So here we've got a mixture, depending on whether you're doing your exam remote or in person. Let me know in the chat. Have you set your exam up to be an online exam or have you set it up to do at an exam centre? Because you do have the choice now, which choice is always wonderful. Um, so if you're doing it at an exam centre, plan your route, especially if you haven't been there before. Um, so sometimes these are in locations that aren't necessarily obvious. Uh, so if you know where you're going, that will absolutely give you an advantage. Um, and make sure that you've got your bag set and everything ready in terms of the paperwork ahead of time and get an alarm set there for you as well. Uh, so we look like we've all doing it all on, online. Okay, brilliant. So if you're doing it online, um, which I'm a big fan of, I must say, I think this is a, a huge advantage once, you are, once you've done it, particularly the first time, because the first time can be a bit, just feel a bit scary. It doesn't have to be. So we want to get rid of that fear factor. So um, make sure you have downloaded the technology. Make sure you have done the test. The CII will be sending you um, notifications and you can go into your account and just check all of the uh, information about how to test it. There is a link to this on the CII website. I will dig it up and put it in the chat actually for the end of this call. If, you have, if anyone hasn't found it, let me know. Um, make sure you please, please test it. The vast majority of problems that people have when they do an online test is when they haven't downloaded and tested that uh, application. And then when it comes to the exam, they have an issue and it takes a bit of time to resolve that issue. So please, please don't take it for granted. Absolutely go in and just test it, even if you might've done it an exam a few months ago, you might've had an update on your computer. Just make sure you've got that really fresh. Um, you need to make sure you have a room that is uh, within the exam conditions. And that generally means there's not much in the room. Simply know where that you could hide answers. So you're gonna need to give them a tour of your room. They're gonna need to see what's in there. So you can't have, for example, a second screen or anything where you can have information popping up. Uh, you can't have any paperwork around or anywhere you could hide paperwork. So make sure you have a nice tidy room that's ready for the invigilator to have a look around. Um, and set yourself a cutoff point so you, you can have some plans in the evening or something just to relax a little bit that you're not kind of putting yourself on the overdrive you're waking up the next day feeling fresh feeling able okay so the exams themselves the learning outcomes section um, within your textbook is absolutely vital albeit very easy to miss um, this is the right at the beginning of your textbook, and what it does is breaks down the different learning objectives that will come with the syllabus, and how many questions in your paper will come from that section. So if you want to go through it and have a look, you'll get a very good idea which, which sections are going to produce the most questions. I'm very conscious there not to say which chapters. Sometimes the learning outcomes do not align with chapters. You might have one chapter that covers more than one learning outcome, so it might put your numbers out of sync. So go through and have a look at these titles. The text will be very clearly aligned to what's in each chapter. Have a look through those chapters and just check that you um, are putting the right amount of time into each section. So for example, if you're seeing that there's 17 questions, 
coming from uh, one of the learning outcomes, this is a chapter you certainly want to give a lot more attention than one of the ones that's going to provide slightly less questions. And when you do the practice papers, you will get this same continuous theme of how many questions are coming up as well. So that will give you a clue when you go to the final page within them where you can go back in your book and where you should be looking if you're getting the answers wrong. And if you can see that lots of those wrong answers for you come from the same chapter, that's a very good sign that that's where you want to put your attention as well. So make sure you line up with this. So you're not just sort of taking that by chance. You're quite deliberate with that revision piece. OK, so you're going to have uh, different styles of uh, questions, depending on which paper you are doing. Some of you have got case study questions. Some of you have got multiple answer questions. Uh, and some of you have got simple uh, multiple choice answers. So don't be surprised by this. Make sure you've had a look at the exam format. And um, within our online course, we do do a summary for what your exam is going to look like. That is free for everybody to access. You can go straight in there and have a look, um, regardless of whether or not you're signed on to our online courses. So if you're not sure what is involved in your module, absolutely go in and check that with us. A um, couple of tips for you here with this one. If you have got case study questions, often people find them harder. Um, so it's a good idea to start with them. Start with them when you're feeling most energized, most positive at the beginning, and then go through the rest of the questions. Other thing you might find is sometimes other questions, they make you realize the answer for previous questions. So case study questions tend to come from all different sections of the book. So there could be another question just sparks a little bit of memory for you for something you were unsure about later. So you can go back to those and add in if you were unsure about anything afterwards as well. Um, and also just take note of the syllabus that you're, you're um, uploaded on. Uh, we tend not to see much difference between books on different syllabuses. Sometimes it's as simple as just uh, references and, and, and links that are available within those books. But sometimes if there has been a key change, uh, for example, the contribution amount limit through the FOS, then that will be something that you need to just be aware of in those syllabus updates. Okay, so styles. So the CII are very consistent with their style of asking questions. And this is an advantage if you are you know, doing a few of these exams, those of you that are going into law and doing um, business and finance, of course you might have multiple answer there in law, but you're gonna have very similar style of questions. And um, this hopefully will make you feel a little bit comfortable in terms of what you can expect. So what we wanna consider within them, um, just anything that looks like a new topic, Okay, so anything that's coming as a new topic will often have a question on because the CII um, are writing questions every year, different questions every year. And if you can imagine, some of these books don't change much year on year. So for them to come up with new questions can be a bit tricky. So, um, for example, um, there's a section on drones in LM2. Uh, so it's worth taking a note of that. And I say the FOS, the limits there have changed if you're doing LM1. Absolutely just check in on that. I think that comes up in most of your modules actually as well. Uh, any lists that are in your book lists are brilliant for question writers because you need options when you're doing multiple choice so any list of three or list of four that's a really good indication that you probably have a which of these is not question potential coming up there so lists are really key um, just to make sure you're jotting down in your notes and preparing for in advance what I also suggest you do as you do past papers is as you look through the wrong answers that you understand what they mean and um, sometimes they will be things that are sort of made up so you might not find the answer but you want to be able to recognize the terms where they do mean something because you can almost test your knowledge against what that definition is in addition to the correct answers on the list uh, be aware of negative questions so just down the bottom here and um, they will put in bold words that they really don't want you to miss often um, students say that they feel like they're trying, the, the, they're being tricked in their questions. The CII really, really don't want to try and trick you. Uh, they will try and make it as clear as possible. So if you feel like you're trying to be tricked, if it feels like it's maybe too obvious, it's probably just obvious. It's okay. Um, they don't want to set you up to fail. And these questions do get uh, checked by multiple people to make sure that they're not ambiguous. Um, so if something is in bold, then really pay attention to it to make sure that you are reading the question correctly. Um, 
And when you have in particular got your list, then use acronyms uh, to come up with list, uh, easy ways to remember the list. So we have our example here for gaps. So if we have goods carrying point A there, uh, agricultural point three, uh, C, um, passengers B, and then special constructions, because V wouldn't work, we have our gaps acronym to help remember that list as well. Um, so absolutely go through and try and make some of these of your own. Again, if you're on our online course, then in the top and tails, we give you any of these that we have that we can share with you as well. So some of them are absolutely ridiculous. Usually the more ridiculous they are, the more helpful they are for you too. Okay, so when it comes to revising, just some real tools you wanna to be making sure you're making the most of. Um, so your index test, uh, absolutely go through and, and check that. Uh, those of you that have got your exam next week, it's worth having a look at that now just to see if there's anything in there that you have uh, no recollection of. So you can go back and check on that beforehand. Mind maps and posters, particularly for visual learners, you wanna see this stuff in a way that's uh, presented in a spacious and colorful way. So you can see here, these are actually, this is Grace's um, bedroom here. So these are Grace's posters when she was doing her exams. So color coding them, different sections and different places. Uh, make sure you use a lot of space so you can read them nice and clearly uh, and that you um, have different selections of this that works for you. So for me, I really like my maps. I like having things drawn out uh, and, and coming off one another. And then I can try and picture, I can think, oh, there was something coming off that, what was coming off that. That visual memory for me is really um, much more helpful than looking at uh, blocks of text. Practice questions. So practice questions are available for you in a whole range of places. Um, I'll show you um, just on here, first of all. So in the CII's website for every single module, they have at least one, sometimes two, depending on when the syllabus update was due, exam guides. They are called exam guides. Uh, what they actually are is a guide to your exam and then, and then a practice paper. So if you scroll down through that document, you will find an exam guide in there. Uh, there is at least one of these for every module. So please, please, please always do this. Um, again, if you're in an online course, we have this on as an electronic version as well. So you can test it out yourself and get your right answers and wrong answers instantly in there too. So that's an extra section we've added in recently for you. Those of you that have been in it for a little while now. Um, and then your updates are in there as well. So these are the two things you really should be just checking before you go ahead and uh, before you get to the last few days before your exam. And the last one on there, revision cards. So um, if you guys, all of all of the modules you're studying, those of you that are here right now, uh, we do have revision cards. For those of you that are next week, we probably can't do it quick enough, but we can do our online ones. So um, let's give you a freebie here. Um, send a email over to us, pop it in the chat. Um, and let us know that you've been on this webinar today and what you are studying and your address, um, and we will get these over to you. And those of you that have got your exam next week, send an email to us saying what your exam is and that your email is, um, your exam is next week, and we'll do it online instead. Okay. Um, so when it comes to the actual exam, you have the option of flagging questions. So if you look at a, a question and you're not certain on the answer, absolutely flag it. What I'd recommend you do, if you have a guess, if you roughly know what the answer is, then flag it and answer it. So now you're going to come back to the answer and double check on yourself because you might find it's easier to remember come the end of your exam. We might find it harder depending on where your mind's gone. Um, you also have the option of highlighting. So if you are torn between two different answers, then maybe highlight those two answers. So when you come back, you don't need to worry about the other ones that you haven't highlighted. You just focused on that particular one. And this highlight option is particularly helpful as well if you're doing case study questions. So when you're doing case study questions, there will be key terms and key points in there as well. On the case studies, you will generally get um, several paragraphs. So what you might find is that the first paragraph you think gives you the information you need for your question. Still read all of it. Make sure there's nothing that discounts what was in the first paragraph for your particular question. So don't get complacent that you've spotted the information you need. Make sure you read all of the case study there. Um, and if you read that first and highlight key points all the way through before you do the questions, it's gonna help you do that as well. At rough paper um, absolutely will help you in your exam in terms of jotting things down uh, and just 
putting down any notes that you have that come into your mind, particularly at the beginning of the exam, when you've got things that you don't want to forget come the end of the exam. You're all doing, say you're all doing different modules. So your durations are going to be quite different. One hour, two hour exams. Um, two hours is a long time. So what you might have had right at the front of your mind at the beginning of an exam, two hours later, really could have disappeared. So anything that you really struggle to remember, I tend to write down my acronyms. So any of my uh, little stories, just write those down. I'll remember the words if I remember the acronym. Sometimes I just forget the acronym. So writing those down at the beginning is really helpful. Use your time allowance. Um, absolutely go through and just double check where you're confident. Um, what, what I do sometimes see is people who um, go back and second guess themselves too much. So if you find you're a second guesser and you don't think that works for you, you think you talk yourself out of the right answer, then what I suggest you do is definitely lose the flag option use the flag option, sorry, um, and go back to those questions and don't go back to the ones you didn't flag if you think you're going to talk yourself out the right answer. If you're quite confident that you're just going to go through and look at them in the same state of mind that you were at the beginning of the exam, then of course read all of them. If you find yourself you're talking, talking yourself out of what you think could have been right, try just doing it in a targeted way. And again, if you get tired, take the case studies first, take those difficult questions first of all. So the other thing we want to look out for is questions where you think you know the answer quite quickly. You're quite quick to jump into it. Um, so motor insurance, uh, windscreen claims can be classed as so we'd have high frequency, high severity, high frequency, low severity, low frequency, high severity, low frequency, low severity. These kind of answers, it's very easy to think you'll know what you're reading and, and click it um, without sort of double checking your question. Uh, particularly if you're doing LM1, I think um, uh, I had this in LM1. I totally understood the, the market cycle uh, <laughs> and I got this answer wrong and I know I got it wrong because it had a learning objective all of its own and it only had one question assigned. So when I got my results through and I had my learning objectives, I got 0% against that one. So I know I got it wrong. Um, even though I know I knew it, I just jumped in and I saw like, so what I thought was going to be uh, jump into a straight answer and then went, um, went and selected the wrong one. So where you've got lots of options and they sound similar, just make sure you double check, flag this type of one to go back and make sure you read it afterwards. So um, you have a section for questions. Now, the knowledge check questions, the revision rate questions are not practice questions. They're not past paper questions. So they are there just to test your knowledge and see what gaps you have. Just note that because sometimes students get really frustrated that they did really well in those and then they got to the exam and it, the questions were nothing like them. That is deliberate. The CIO have those questions in there to help you learn, not to practice for the test. So there's a big difference between those questions and practice test questions that you're gonna get on the exam guide. The other link that I wanted to take you into um, was the one to prepare for your exam, to go in um, and have a look at the PSI website. So please go in and do that for yourself, first of all, if you haven't used that PSI website before, just to feel familiar with it. It's quite, you know, it's quite straightforward. You're not going to go in and be like, oh, wow, this was you know, really, really surprising information. What you really are going to benefit from is just feeling familiar with it. Exams are scary. Exam days have a lot of pressure. You're going to be anxious about remembering things. But you also could be anxious about your IT, your room layout, having to tidy it up that morning, where your ID is going to be, that you don't know what the system is going to be, you're going to click the right buttons or not. All of these other things you can prepare for absolutely in advance. So we want to reduce as much of that anxiety and have all of that organised. So on the day of the exam, when your mind is running overdrive and sending you into panic, you do not need to worry about the things that you could have looked at before. So please go in and have a look at that. Even if you did an exam six months ago, it's a little bit of time. Just go in, have a look, feel comfortable with it. So that when you turn up on the exam day, you feel completely organized and prepped for all of this kind of stuff. Um, uh, okay, let me show you instead of the CRI website. Um, we will have a look. I'll just give you some pointers where we've got questions as well for you too. So if you're doing our courses, you're gonna have a whole range of places to test your knowledge. Uh, so the first thing you can do is your mind maps. These are the learning outcomes, so where the learning outcomes are, which um, content you need to remember for how many questions. So you're going to have a mind map coming out here. So we've got learning outcomes one and two, 11 questions. 
Uh, and this is going to give you a breakdown of everything that comes into that one. So you can work through each of these mind maps. Um, sorry, chapters one or two. You can wait for all of this to um, make you feel more comfortable with each of the sections. Um, we also have a checklist, which is the checklist at the end of each chapters, just to make sure you're comfortable ticking off. You can print these, take these out and print them off on there as well. Uh, test your knowledge. This is where you can do practice questions at the end of each module uh, chapter. So we generally have 10 questions there, if unless it's a really tiny chapter, then we can't pull 10 questions out of it. Um, and our roundups. Um, we, uh, these are you know, very different content to the rest of the book. This is literally me and Grace having a chat about what's in the module. If you haven't looked at these, looking at them before your exam is very, very worthwhile because this is where we give you the acronyms, the likely things that are gonna come up in the exam. So we're gonna give you any pointers on regular questions um, that might come up in there too. Um, and the other thing that I would absolutely encourage you to do those at the very last stage is to come on to the um, practice papers. So again, this is the CII papers. So we pop them in here so you can go through and do the whole paper in one go online without having to go through and check your answers for yourself. They're all written out there for you. Okay. Um, if any of you got your exam next week as well, uh, accelerate your revision. This includes all the memory techniques as well for our next webinar. So you can go in and have a look at that um, in advance so you don't have to miss out on that one too.